I've always been interested in the architecture of home offices. Very often, I see how it's kind of a global trend because more and more people see the value of expressing themselves through their spaces, and that's exactly what the design aspect of architecture is all about. The connection between the user, the design space, and the natural environment around them. My name is Emmy, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I design my own workspace setup as an architect and designer in my home office with the intention of making every item on it meaningful and purposeful. I promise by the end of this video, you will learn a more systemized flow on how you can improve your workspace by keeping things intentional, meaningful, appealing, and organized. A workspace that not only looks great, but also helps you be more excited, productive, and focused. In the process of designing this space, I thought about three major things, the importance of intention, function, and organization. First, let's talk about intention. When designing my workspace, I made sure to only include items that serve a specific purpose. With design as my primary work, every item in my list were specifically chosen to aid me in my daily tasks. This section mainly talks about my approach in design and why I chose the main items in my space and my intention behind those choices. Moving on to the items in the space, starting with my desk. I finally jumped the gun and purchased my very own standing desk. I got mine from a local company called Ergo Home. It's a relatively big desk measuring a meter and a half in length and 0.75 meters in depth. A recent study published in the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health found that using a standing desk can lead to significant reductions in overall sedentary time and improve cardiovascular health. The study suggests that using a standing desk can reduce the negative health effects associated with prolonged sitting. Underneath the desk, I did my best to tame the cables and manage them using some Velcro, command strips, and cable ties. I chose the all-white finish to freshen up the space and create contrast against my dark walls and all the other black items around me. Plus, having an all-white desk evokes the emotion of having a blank canvas that I can work on each time I use the space. My intention for choosing this desk apart from comfort is of course to allow me to have more surface area and real estate for drawing and writing. The chair I'm using is also from the same company, and it's called Ventus. This is my very first ergonomic chair and I've been using it for the past two years. I changed the caster wheels to make the movement smoother. Nothing much special, but it definitely helps my back. So my intention was to aid my sitting position as best as I can while I'm working. At the center of my desk is my new monitor. It's a 32 inches LG 4K monitor. It's incredibly sharp and detailed, making it ideal for tasks that require high image quality, such as photo and video editing, graphic design, and generating images from architecture work. It's also HDR10 compatible, which means that it can display a wider range of colors and contrast than a standard monitor. It also features a USB-C port, which allows me to connect my Mac Mini and reduces the need for an HDMI cable, making my data transfer rate much, much faster. The best feature for me is its stand. It's a stand that allows the monitor to float above my desk without cluttering its undersides. It also allows me to adjust my monitor and angle it for comfort so I can see my work better. Though for me, the monitor is a little bit costlier. My intention was to invest on a monitor with higher specs so I can continue to elevate the quality of my design work. At this day and age, in the design world, I truly think that 4K is now the industry standard. I work with two devices, a Mac Mini M1 and a custom-built PC. My main device is my Windows PC, which I finally had built for the purpose of tackling a wider range of projects as an architect. This is because my 9-year-old PC could not handle generating models and renders anymore because of its outdated RAM and processor. Additionally, the choices for GPU models are also limited since my old motherboard could not accommodate modern GPUs anymore. The intention for this PC is for me to be able to save a lot of time generating intensive images as an architect and designer. Because I handpicked each component, I knew exactly how to utilize the machine and its advantages. The PC has a 12th generation Intel i7 processor, 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM, an NVIDIA 3070 Founders Edition GPU, 1TB of SATA storage, 1TB of NVMe storage, and an NZXT 120mm liquid cooling fan. All of which are mounted on an Asus Z690 Pro Art motherboard. The case I used to encapsulate everything is an NZXT H510 flow. I got it because of its understated look and the quality of its airflow. It's fast, 
efficient, and a greatly spec PC for all my design and architecture work needs. I use softwares like AutoCAD, Revit, SketchUp, V-Ray, and Lumion, all of which require fast components because of their amazing capability to create professional architecture projects done. Because of the PC specs, I was able to work on projects much, much faster without waiting hours for a single image to finish rendering. It garnered me more time to close more transactions and do more important tasks. I had to admit that it took me two years to finally understand how PC components work and the right ones to choose for my customized build. Having a custom built PC is nice and all, and some might even ask, what's the use of having another computer? I purchased a Mac Mini with the M1 chip last year for the sole purpose of content creation. This is the device I use to edit and post-process every single image and video I create for both YouTube and Instagram. I run my digital products business using this machine as well. Having a dedicated device for the sole purpose of content creation and business growth is something I found to be very useful in my case. The clear line between my professional work as an architect and my work as a content creator helps me organize my thoughts better and gives me enough headspace to jump from one project to another. Another reason why I have a Mac Mini is because of Apple's continuity in software management. I can easily send files to my iPhone via AirDrop, easily listen to audio using my AirPods Pro, and syncing files to my Apple devices using my Apple ID saves me a lot of time. I also use Logic Pro, which is an Apple-specific app to record my audio, produce music for videos, and for doing pre-production music for my band. My Mac Mini sits on a Satachi dock in the space gray colorway. They don't have matching finishes, but oddly enough, it works perfectly fine. Function is also an important aspect of my office setup. Before putting everything together, I assessed my needs and habits. I knew that the space's function is for productivity and creativity as well as my personal enjoyment of having a comfortable environment to work in. This allowed me to decide on the items that complement my main devices. My peripherals play a huge role to my workflow. I have owned a Keychron K2 for the past two years now and I decided to finally replace it with a slimmer one. I chose the Keychron K3 with brown switches to be my daily driver because of its comfort. My thinner keyboard is now easier to type on, quieter, and is the perfect in-between of a membrane and a mechanical keyboard. It can still connect up to three devices and can seamlessly work across my Mac and Windows devices by using the function and number keys. It's also backlit with shine-through keycaps which work well at night when I dim the lights in my office down. Because of its size, it's portable and it eliminates the need for a bulky wrist rest. Alternatively, I use an Apple Magic Keyboard for when I work remotely or when I want to take a break from mechanical keyboards. My mouse of choice is still the MX Master 3. I can't praise this mouse enough and I still think that it's a perfect productivity mouse especially for designers and creators. It connects to three devices as well and can be customized using the Logi Options Plus app. With this mouse, I customize specific functions for softwares like Photoshop and Premiere Pro. When I edit videos, the horizontal scroll wheel allows me to travel through the timeline much, much faster. Its shape is ergonomic and fits perfectly in my hand, so I don't feel any fatigue whenever I do long hours of work. I have it in the graphite colorway, and I believe I will still be using this mouse for years to come. For my backup mouse, I still use my Logitech G304. The main reason why is because of its cheaper price point, you get a lightweight mouse that can also be customized using the Logitech G Hub app. It's a really fast mouse and a pleasure to use whenever I game during my downtime. Because of its size, it's also my travel mouse of choice. To anchor things at the heart of the setup, I still have my medium-sized Orbit Key desk mat. The surface has a smooth vegan leather finish in black, and underneath is a felt wool-like material. Because it's designed to keep some papers and documents underneath, it's easy to organize and declutter my desk. Audio is a very important aspect of my workstation for a couple of reasons. First, it allows for a more immersive and enjoyable experience when listening to music, watching shows, and even playing video games. Second, which for me is the most important, is the accurate sound reproduction which can greatly enhance the overall sound quality of the music and audio that I produce for my videos. I still have my M-Audio AV42 monitor speakers which I use daily for monitoring audio whether for video editing or music production. They are connected to my Rode A1 audio interface which provides a great quality preamp without having a large footprint on my desk. Since I never record with two inputs at once, I find that this interface still gets the job done, although I'm looking into replacing it with something else in the future. 
To reduce bleeding of sound whenever I record vocals, I use my Audio-Technica M30X to hear what I'm recording. Sometimes, using headphones can make you hear clearer audio, especially lower frequencies. For music production and recording, I almost exclusively use Logic Pro as my software. And lastly, I have a Blue Yeti USB microphone for voiceovers. It's not the best microphone out there, but I find that it's one of the easiest mics to use whenever you want to quickly record something and you don't want to route everything through an audio interface. Next to audio is lighting. Having good lighting in a workspace is important for productivity, focus, and mental well-being. Adequate lighting can help to improve visibility, reduce eye strain, and increase overall comfort, all of which can contribute to a more productive work environment. Although nothing beats natural light, I made sure that my space is well lit by adding a light bar on top of my monitor. I use the basis light bar to light my desk whenever I write notes and sketch. It also acts as my desk light which completely removes the need of having a desk lamp that will take up any space on the desk. For lighting my face during conference calls, I use the Elgato Key Light Mini mounted on a stand. It's Wi-Fi enabled and I can easily adjust its basic settings using the Elgato's app. I really think that the Key Light Mini is extremely handy because its back surface is also magnetic and you can latch it onto many metal surfaces for ease of use. Charging it is also easy because it's powered by USB-C. For some accent lights, I installed a strip light from Xiaomi behind my desk to reduce eye strain and to give my wall a little bit of character, especially when working at night. I accidentally cut the end of the strip before the cutting area, so there's a portion that can't be modified anymore and it's just red. I actually like that it has its own character, so I don't really mind it. Reducing distractions and maintaining organization are also key elements of my desk setup. I make sure to keep my desk clear of unnecessary items and regularly declutter so that I can focus on the task at hand. Part of having a great workspace is organization and keeping everything as tidy as possible. Beside my desk is an Alex drawer on wheels. I chose the white collar to match my desk and give it a seamless look. It provides five different drawers where I can store all of my frequently used items and gear. Sitting on top of it is my PC and a faux plan from Ikea. The first drawer is where I organize all my cables. In it, I placed some trays I got from a local store and organized some small items like my Laser Mesher Pro from Hodo, my backup mouse, a mini tripod for my webcam, and my extra earphones. The second drawer is where I put my items for sketching, journaling, and drafting needs. The third one is for my music and audio equipment. The fourth one is for more miscellaneous items and the last one below is for quick access to my camera equipment. To my left, I installed a small SCADA spec board from IKEA with two trays to hold some of my frequently used small items and display my keyboards. The wall used to be empty, but I find having a small organization feature in here which can also act as a display anchor completes the overall look of the space. Behind the desk, I have three organizational elements. An Alex chest drawer on wheels where I store valuable tools and items for various projects. A Lerberg shelf which displays some decor and holds the current books I'm reading, as well as my cleaning tools. And this trolley on wheels which I use to not only store some important items but functions as a mobile storage whenever I'm shooting around the area. In addition to functional items, I also like to include elements of nature in my workspace. Though I personally prefer having live plants in the space, I have two cats who room with me and they often munch on the greenery which is not good for both the cats and the plants. I find that adding a touch of greens in a space breaks the monotony and rigidness of an otherwise utilitarian looking area. To further organize my small items, I added a small wooden tray which I got from H&M Home. It sometimes sits underneath my monitor or directly beside me for easy access. I believe that spaces also need to smell good to enhance the whole experience. So I use a small perfume diffuser to add a subtle scent to the space. For drinking coffee or tea, I have this small matte black mug which I got from a local store which sits on a small round wooden coaster. I normally have a water flask with me when I'm working to keep myself hydrated. Having these small items with me helps me become more physically and mentally organized. Since I have a lot of vertical space, I made use of the wall beside me to hang a metal pegboard. I converted it into a charging station to organize my space further and charge my camera batteries. I also used this to charge my iPad mini and my GoPro. I also added some trays to store some frequently used items and to act as a holder for devices. Above it, 
is another floating shelf where I display some items that spark my creativity. In front of me is a small shelf where I choose to showcase some things that inspire me to be a better designer. Right now, I chose to put a book about Charles and Ray Eames, my old Sony A7 camera, and two small faux plants. Having a desk that's organized is not the only type of organization I focus on. I also do my best to organize my thoughts and ideas by writing them down. I use a moleskin planner for my daily log of journaling, and I use this plain wired notebook from Muji to write down ideas for my content and business. I also have my pencil case from Bellroy where I store all of my writing tools including a mechanical pencil, some felt tip pens, my clicky pen, and a small ruler for drawing. These are my three main writing materials that I use on a daily basis. As much as I love analog, I prefer to use Notion as my main project management tool. I started using it in 2020, and I found that moving my whole workflow in it to be enjoyable and easier. It's a great tool to organize my work and my life in general. With all these systems in place, I benefit from the reduced time for searching items and products, and gains me more time to get more work done. Because every tool, and every item has its own home within the space that was intentionally designed for them to live in. Overall, I'm very happy with this new configuration of the space. I hope you found inspiration and ideas for your own workspace and a workflow on how to conceptualize and design it. At the end of the day, keep in mind that you are the user of your space, so it's best to focus on your intention for each and every item you put in it, their function and meaning, and your systems of organization. If you got to the end of this video, I want to say thanks to you, and I hope to see you in the next one. If you have any questions about the products and design of the space, ask and I'll do my best to answer them. With that being said, see you in the next video. Cheers.